Today, we're talking all about how to set the sag on your mountain bike. And if you have a full suspension, this is gonna work for. Also, if you just have a hardtail that has an air fork up front, this is also gonna work for that. Get you set up for your rider weight and get you out on the trail. And this thing is gonna maximize your performance and let the suspension do what it was designed to do. All right, stay tuned for this video. We're gonna tell you how to do it. So sag is pretty much how much your bike sags, hence the, the term there, into the travel when you sit on the bike just under your normal weight. As you can tell, the bike did drop when I sat on it. So that's what we're going to be measuring. That's what we're going to be setting up today. Uh, the reason you want to have your sag set is so that the bike is already into the travel of the suspension. That way it can soak up those small bumps and things and just overall maximize the performance of the suspension. And they do this for dirt bikes, uh, road bikes, all that type of stuff. Anything that has suspension, you need to set it up for your rider weight. So it's no different with a mountain bike. So some tools you're gonna need to do this. And if you haven't bought one already, you have to buy a shock pump. So this is different than a regular floor pump as it has low volume, high pressure. So you can tell how small this pump is, but this has to get up to you know, 175 PSI, 200 PSI. So it's very high pressure with not a lot of volume. So it's different than a floor pump. So make sure you get one of these. It's gonna allow you to really be able to dial in the suspension on your bike. Also, you need to measure how much travel that your bike has. So you may know how much travel. Uh, let's take, for example, this bike. It has 150 mils of travel up front. And we're gonna go ahead and double check that and I'll show you a nice little tool that you can make to actually make this a lot easier. So I can see right there, 150 mils of travel. So we're gonna be taking, for me, I like to take around 20 to 25% for the fork. And then on the rear here, yours may have a little cheat indicator like mine does, but it also indicates how much percentage on the shock housing here that you're sitting at once you sit it down and place that o-ring yeah i like to around 25 to 30 percent sag for the rear shock so we're going to be looking for those numbers there so if you're looking for a little tool to kind of just help you out every single time so you don't have to bring this out and something that you can use every single time just to double check that your sag is still correct is you can make one of these little things out of cardboard or i'm sure you could use paper but I got 150 mils measured out there. And then I've made a little indication here of where it should be for 25% sag. Just to double check, this is a cool little tip right here. So now that you have your tools, the very first step that we're gonna do is go ahead and measure to make sure that we know exactly what measurement we need to be sitting at. Also confirm that you still have an O-ring if not, you can place a zip tie on this for temporary use and then take it off after you're done. Uh, but hopefully it has an O-ring. It's a little bit easier to work with. So if you don't have little indicators like this, obviously this is really easy. So if I'm looking to set my rear sag for 25%, then obviously this little notch right between 20 and 30 is going to get us there. Or if I'm going to do 30%, that is going to be good too. So good rule of thumb there, 25 to 30% for your rear sag should get you in the ballpark of where you need to be. And obviously after you get it all uh, set up and you still seem to need some more tweaks, you can obviously uh, work with this a little bit to see what actually maximizes your performance the most. Okay, so to do the math here, you see I have 55 mils of travel as a whole. So if I'm looking to get to 25% sag, that's somewhere around 14 and a half mils. So if I'm sitting down, that is gonna be about 14 and a half mils if I were to measure this. So just a real quick, easy rule of thumb, that's about 14 mils with the 55 mil stroke there. So just real simple, that's how you do it. If you don't have this little guide here, I know this is, this is really easy to use, but if you don't have the guide, that's how you do the simple math. When it comes to setting the sag on your bike, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have all the lockout devices turned off. So that would be full lockout. 
This right here means it's completely unlocked out. The rebound doesn't matter. We'll be setting that at a later time. Please check out my video on how to set rebound. And then what we're gonna do is slide the O-ring that's down here all the way up to the shock housing. And that's gonna make sure that when we sit down, that's gonna move the O-ring to where we need it so we can verify. Okay, also, you're not gonna be pressing any of the brakes because if, especially if you use the rear brake, that's gonna keep the travel from actually working. So just make sure you don't hit that rear brake. And for me, it doesn't matter if you really have the seat in your rider position or not. I just have it all the way down. Uh, that way I can get on and off the bike real easy without bumping the shock too much. Okay, so I'm just gonna get on here nice and easy. I'm gonna sit down with my weight. And what you would wanna do is actually put on all your gear that way you're actually getting the correct weight for how you ride. So it's the most accurate. Okay, so we sat down on it and now I'm just going to get back off of it nice and easy without compressing it anymore. All we're gonna do is verify that we're at the correct setting and my O-ring is sitting at the perfect mark between 20 and 30, so it's sitting right at 25%. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, okay, your bike is set up good, but what if I actually need to make adjustments? Let's say we're sitting at 25% and we want to actually get it to 30% sag. All you have to do is release air out of the shock. So you're going to take this pump, you're going to locate your Schrader valve that's on your rear shock here. Okay, make sure you don't lose your cap. And then you're going to take the little fitting that comes on your shock pump Make sure not to cross thread this. Because if you cross thread it, you could really mess up your whole shock. So that's gonna lock on there. Okay, so we're sitting right at 200 PSI for the gauge here. Um, all you have to do to release air is to locate the little button that your shock pump will have, and you're just gonna let out some air by using that. Don't try to stick anything in that valve and release air without using a shock pump. You could mess up that whole valve and then therefore end up messing your shock up. All right, so we're releasing it. And you can see how fast it actually goes down because it is high pressure, low volume. And all we're gonna do now is check to see if the sag went up. And one thing you wanna check is, you know, I just moved from the Midwest out to New Mexico and I usually run it around 30% sag, but moving here, the altitude's super high and it actually went up to 25% sag. So keep that in mind. If you're moving to a new location, definitely check your sag. It could have changed based on that elevation. Okay, we're gonna get back on the bike and see if this changed any. I'll go ahead and push that O-ring back up to the shock tube housing. Not hitting the brakes or anything. Okay. And you can see just by letting just a little bit of PSI out, this actually moved down to right at 30 PSI. Give or take just a little bit because this O-ring does take up a couple mils. So you're looking at probably around, you know, 27, 28 percent sag right here and that's that's also going to be perfect that's still within spec of that 25 to 30 percent sag we're looking for in the rear so that is it for setting the rear sag and like i said if you get out there on the trails and you notice that your your bike isn't performing like it should the small bumps are just beating you up or maybe you hit a, a big bump and the compression is just not enough you can definitely add air or take away air, make those fine adjustments after you get back. So this might not get you perfect, but it's gonna get you pretty close. This is just a good rule of thumb to get you where you need to be. All right, guys, we're gonna move from the rear shock to actually working with the front fork here because it is a little bit different. Uh, for the most part, it's kind of the same, uh, but we're gonna show you those steps too. Okay, when it comes to setting your front fork sag, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have an O-ring or a zip tie. We're gonna to be using this to see how much sag that we actually have in the fork. 
Just like in the introduction, you're gonna to want to measure, find some type of measuring device that you can see how many mils of travel that your bike has from the top here of the stanchion to where the fork housing is down here. And you can see 150 mils. So we're gonna be wanting anywhere from 20 to 25% for the front fork. That's just a general number that should get you in the right ballpark for just about any type of fork. Like I said, I took the numbers and actually translated them over to this. So I took the 150 mils, placed it up against here. So we have 150 total, and you can see this actually fits right there in the travel. And then what we're gonna wanna do is actually flip it this way. And this right here should be around where we want. So to do the math here, we took 150 mils, we multiplied that by the 0.25 for the 25% sag. That gave me a number of 37 mils of travel that we're gonna be taking out of that 150 mils of travel. Okay, so we're gonna be using this as a gauge and a reference. So I just strongly suggest doing this right out of the box. That way you can have this and keep it, and then you can use it as a reference every single time you're setting your sag. Okay, we're gonna get on the bike and we're gonna go through pretty much the same motions. We're gonna be doing a little bit different for the front fork, but the overall results are gonna be pretty much the same. So the first step of setting the front fork sag is you're gonna to wanna to make sure your compression or your lockout is turned completely off. That way it's not impeding the travel of the suspension here. So all we have, we don't have a true lockout. We just have a compression dial. So we're gonna make sure this is turned all the way off and then you're gonna locate your zip tie or your O-ring, slide that all the way down to where the fork housing is. That way it's gonna slide up and give us our sag number. Okay, I like to find some type of wall or something like that to lean up against. That way we can get into a more aggressive riding position. And if you have a friend or somebody that can help you out, maybe hold the bike a little bit, uh, then that's gonna give you the best results. But we're gonna go ahead and get on the bike once again, not touching the front brake or the rear brake, and I'm just gonna get up on the bike a little bit, because if we're going across the trail and stuff, this is gonna be kind of our riding position. And then what we're gonna do is just kind of slowly get back off of it. Okay. Okay, so we got the gauge. So you can see that is, it's a little bit off. So it looks like it's a, probably about two to three mils off to give us that 37%. Right, hopefully you guys can see that, but it's, it's pretty close. So you may be asking yourself, okay, what's the next step if I actually need to adjust this? So it's like the rear shock if you need to, for us, we need to get more sag. So we're gonna let air out of this, just like we did the rear shock. And I'm guessing that's because of the elevation change once again. But if you needed to add air to this, all you do is just keep adding air small amounts at a time. I would say no more than 10 PSI at a time. And that's gonna get you pretty much in the ballpark to get you to where you need to be. And like I said, it's just those small adjustments that's gotta get you set up. Okay, so if we wanna add or take away air, you just find the Schrader valve and you can see this cap right here it makes it easy for us. It just says air on it. So with this, you don't wanna lose this either. So a lot of times these are just made out of real, I, I mean, it's okay plastic, I guess, or it'll be l aluminum. So you really don't want to strip it out. So make sure you're being really cautious when you're taking these on and off. You're gonna take your shock pump, screw it back on the Schrader valve on the fork. Being very cautious not to cross thread this thing. You really don't want to mess up your expensive fork. Blows my mind how many people ruin forks. They'll go out and buy, you know, a $5,000 bike with this nice Fox suspension on it. And then they ruin it with their, their shock pump. <laughs> All right, so you screw it on until you can tell the air actually is flowing in and giving you a reading on the valve. All right, so it looks like we have just shy of 100 PSI on the fork here. And then we wanna, give us a little bit more sag. So we're just gonna take out just a little bit. Once again, using the button up here.
All right, so probably right there, and we're gonna test it again to make sure. And if you wanna test it again, you can just leave this hanging. You don't have to actually take this off every time. The more that you can save from cross-threading this thing and minimize that, the better. So just leave that thing kind of hooked up. And then go through the same motions to, to test the sag again, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we just hopped back off the bike. We're gonna test it now to see if it's closer. You can see there, that is pretty much dead on where we're looking for. So all we had to do was take out probably five or six PSI of air and it got us to where we needed to be. All right, so if you did need to add air, like I said, maybe five to 10 PSI at a time. This is a very high pressure pump, so just make sure you're doing it in small increments. All right, we're gonna take this off. It's an easy, make sure we're not cross-threading this thing especially the plastic ones. All right, we're not gonna put it too tight either, just kind of finger tight. All right, I hope you like this video of how to set up your sag on your mountain bike. So hopefully now you can go out there and rip down those trails with ease because your suspension's set up right for your weight. And this is something you should be doing probably the very first thing after you get a brand new bike is getting that sag set up. All right guys, I hope you like this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Give me a little bit of love here on the channel. And also, we'd love to have you as part of the channel, so subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and we can get more videos like this every single week. All right, guys, I'll catch you in those next videos.